Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 23. I am so grateful that you're here with me today because I got some good pointers that I want to share with you that I think is very valuable in leadership and entrepreneurial practices and just doing basic life transitions and skill sets and different things like that. So let's get right into it. Today, I'm going to talk about the peacock. And the peacock is very, very important. It's a, it, it's a beautiful bird that symbolizes so many great things that I think we can use when we look at ourselves. When we look in the mirror, we should see the beauty of who we are um, deep in our eyes. We need to, to really look not just on the outward appearance of who we are, but that individual we are inside when no one else is looking. Those are the significant symbolisms to the peacock. So basically, the peacock symbol is all about renewing oneself, going in, trying a new journey, testing it out, testing the waters, believing in ourselves, honoring ourselves, being royal to ourselves, giving ourselves that moment of time where we do take a break, where we don't need a mental break in order to take a break. We need that time where we do know that enough is enough. And that comes with intuition. So I do believe that that is a strong symbolism of leadership. Also the beauty and the protection and the confidence that comes with being self-loved is what the symbolic perspective of the peacock is all about. So I bring that in today to connect to something that I wanted to share with you. And that is the struggles that we face when we meet individuals who are going to bring us situations. Um, some people call them haters. Some people call them individuals who motivate us to make us greater later. And then there are, you know, those people who are just distractions you know, distractions in our lives. And then there are those people who are genuinely there to see us succeed and grow. As an observer in business, I've watched in individual businesses start off with the epic, oh, I want to do this, that, and whatever. Here's my mission statement. I have this, I have that. And then they, by the time they're halfway in, not knowing that they just got a little bit more ways to go before they're at that balance of success, they tend to die off. They tend to drop off. They tend to back away. Now, I don't know what's going on in the ear with the ego or with people who are surrounding them, but there are going to be a few people in life we're going to meet as entrepreneurs moving into the area of success that we're trying to take our perspectives and our mission. So we're going to have some people who are going to create assignments to push us to see our true inner beauty, just like the peacock, and embrace that beauty. So they're going to, they're going to motivate us. They're going to say, go get it. Go get your blessing. Go out there, make it happen. And then they're going to be there to invest, sponsor, support you in the, met, in the method of how you're going to achieve your goal. And no one can bring you to that goal except for you. Okay? That's why we create mission and vision statements. Then we have some people who feel that beauty is, you know, the beauty of the peacock that we were talking about, the beauty of your dream, your passion is too over the top. Oh, you're shining too much. Dumb it down. You know, don't go so hard. Our people aren't ready for that. Many people are asleep. They don't know what this is. They don't understand. That is the person who is going to motivate us to see that some people are going to try to slow us down and stop our shine. Why? Because they want to catch up to us enough to say we're equal because they obviously missed some things. They've been asleep for a while or they've been too busy in other people's business until they did not focus. See, some people need to learn the basic fundamentals of focusing. 
Once they do that, then they'll say um, things like, oh, okay, I understand now. I should be focused on what I'm doing and not worried about this individual and what their business is doing and that individual and what their business is doing. You know, staying focused is the key. We're going to meet some people like that. They're going to try to distract us by saying we're over the top and we're shining just way too much. These distractors are defined as attractors to our passion. So they're going to attract magnetically to the things that we are showing, the little pearly um, jewels that we're manifesting in our lives. They're going to see just those things. They're not going to see the backstory. They're not going to see the thing that um, motivates us to get up at one and two and three o'clock in the morning and push for um, projections. They're not going to see that. These distractors are attracted to the style and the grace that moves us to do what we are doing because they're not aware that they could have done it. And then they're going to try throwing us off by holding us back until they catch up. Do you want me to slow it down? Do you want me to speed it up? Do you want me to slow it down? Do you want me to speed it up? That's what it's going to be feeling like. And I've been there and I've done that with them. Some may even find an area of weakness and try to manipulate another self-confidence, saying that, oh, you don't know what you're doing. You're too young of an entrepreneur. You don't have enough experience, or you don't have this degree, or you don't have that degree. You're not certified to do this. You're not certified to do that. Do what you feel. Intuition is the greatest experience provider in, in education because that's going to show you what you need to do. Now, I've been through these situations that I'm talking about, and they only gave me the fuel to motivate myself to move even further to the next level. And that's how I got my peacock stripes. Now, mind you, the outward appearance is not going to be the same as it was when you first start the journey. The mental balance of life is not going to be the same because you're going to have experiences that are going to either make or break you at this time. So you have to make the decision. The car you drive is not the motivator that's going to man manipulate the situation. I've seen people come um, into uh, talk to me on business development with Maseratis. Um, I've seen them come in with, with, you know, top, top of the line model vehicles, and they're still not happy. The Mercedes Benzes, they're not happy. They're not. That is just a relic to show that this is what they're feeling, especially those who are trying to come in to distract because they have those tools, because they have that model body or whatever type of, of thing that motivates them to think that they're better, okay? These are the people that we want to use as fuel to motivate us to move us to another level and get another notch in our peacock, okay? Our peacock beauty, our uh, dress, if you will. Here's the public service announcement, the very thing that I am going to say that is going to make all the sense in the world, okay? So if you haven't heard anything, hear this. Let no one know your next move until you've already done it. That way they are so attracted by what you've produced already, they think that's the end. So now, as they're gravitating and trying to see how they could sabotage this thing, you're moving on to your next passion, your next vision, your next goal. Never just have one goal because that's easy to take away. OK, and never, ever love some material possession so much that you're not willing to see it walk away. Let it go. It could be in a divorce. It could be something natural catastrophe. It could be something that somebody just did just because they wanted to see how you would handle it. Whatever it is, you always learn to let material possessions go. It's OK. Lose it. You'll regain it again. And it'll be better, okay? And then 
Let no one know your next move until you have already done it. That way they are so attracted by what you've already produced. They're, they won't be able to sabotage the dream that your next vision for what it is you have for yourself, they won't be able to destroy it. And that's what I've learned. It took me to fall and experience 11 years of, 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 of academia, personal experience, professional experience, academia, to say that in the fall, it is how you get back up, how you bounce back up, what riz or what style you have when you get back up. And it's not about competition at that time because no one has experienced what you've done as far as you're concerned because you were the one who who went through the process. And, and I was talking to someone the other day that said that can someone be responsible for, you know, what someone else has done? No, absolutely not. That person must, just like if you're rewarded for being a number one singer or a pop star, or number one in the world for something, you're the one that received the reward, not your mother. Yeah, you may give honor to your mother for being there pushing you, but you are the one that received the reward and you are the one that's going to receive the accolade, whether it's good or bad. And that's what I'm saying today. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. Yes, this is Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Episode 23, if you are interested and you would like to know more about business development, developing personal um, self-confidence and and self-love, give me a call, 330-956-0511, and we will talk about it. We will help you empower yourself. Thank you so much for being here, and as always, keep it 100, and we will see you next time. Blessings.